This video is about basic theory in Taiji Pushkin. After watching this video, please answer three questions. Question number one. If someone is pushing you, what is going to happen to your brain and your body? Question number two. If you want to push someone, what is going to happen? Number three. If you want to master your push hand, how many hours it will take? Today, we are going to discuss the physiology of the brain and how is it relate to your training. First of all, when you have uh, some incoming force and you receive the force, it's a pressure sensor on your arm and I'm going to show you how that works. <laughs> pressure at some point stimulates a nerve that goes up the arm in from to the dorsal side of the cervical spine up the spine it crosses over to somatosensory cortex and will be um, somatosensory cortex is laid out such that you're f in the same form as a body such that the feet are towards the center down towards your arms you're going to have some processing here which is then going to coordinate also with your cerebellum in the back of your head and it's going to come down if, for example if you what you want to do is create tension in your shoulder the signal is going to come down it's going to exit ventral cervical spine and stimulate um, whatever muscle groups you need at the neuromuscular junction. Okay, pressure at the leg here will stimulate the up, go up to the lumbar spine and will follow a similar pathway. It will go up the spine, activate th this section of somatosensory cortex. Your processing will happen here, which will determine what type of response you need to make and your motor cortex in, along with other parts of your brain will coordinate the response to that. So at the top of the head we have the cervical spine. Here we see that each vertebrae has been labeled. Around the mid-back we get into the thoracic spine. Towards the bottom of the back, we have the lumbar spine. At the lumbar spine, you start having uh, leg control. And finally, the sacral spine. And here's a map of your both your sensor cortex and motor cortex. And on the top is the feet, torso. I can see it. Feet and torso, and the big area is hand and face and lip and tongue. So that's the map of your sensory cortex and motor cortex. That particular region will receive the signal from the sensory and then the brain will process the signal and generate the output motor cortex will generate the output and it will through your spine sign to particular limb or muscle group so you can control it how many hours you have to do the practice and think about it. we are trying to accomplish the goal of undo many years of our learning relaxed muscles this is a con in contrary of our the whole life if there's a force coming into you you're trying to push back but instead you have to train yourself to be relaxed that will take many hours so this is really a practice of a feedback system you have a sensor you process the signal and then generate the output again you have to train your body to do this again and again and again so many times so you really need a 10,000 hours to do it 
So there's a theory called the 10,000 hours. In order to master something, you really have to spend 10,000 hours. So if you want to be master, you have to spend at least 10,000 hours. Keep a logbook to see how many hours you have 